For the herd of the daughters of my people am I heard. I am black. That means sorrowful there. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? You may be seated. people 
were walking chained and bound. And we, the saints of God, are busy. Got places to go. Things to do. And people to see. Oh, but I'm a Christian. But I'll get to you when I can. Oh, I'm a Christian. But I got to worry about me and mine. Oh, but I'm a Christian. And I'll knock on your door. Maybe. Oh, where is the cry that I want to be used by God? Where is the cry that I want to reach out to lost humanity? What good is singing if nobody's saved? What good is preaching if nobody gets saved? What good is laying your hands on the sick and they recover if they don't get saved? The harvest is past. And the summer is ended. And we are not saved. The Bible said that God is so hurt. For the hurt of my daughter and my people am I hurt. I am black. I'm in sorrow. I'm in mourning. And astonishment has gotten a hold of me. We are the ones with the power. We are the ones with the anointing. We are the ones that God brought out of darkness. That makes it even more. Why are we reaching lost? When we shared in their darkness before. You know, do we really believe folks are going to hell? Do we really believe if I knew my mother was really going to hell? If I really thought hell was for eternity, would I not reach her more? If I really knew my neighbor was lost, would I not try more to reach them? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Bomb is medicine that the priests carry. And when they found people, they would anoint the wounds with salve to heal the brokenness, to heal the cuts, to heal the bruises. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician? Is there a doctor in the house? Say that. Because folks got heart attacks spiritually. Are there no doctors in the house that God can reach? Oh, we reach in our bags and we try to bind the sick. Oh, we tell them everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be well. Oh, don't worry about it. It don't matter what church you go to. We're going to help you out. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh, you're going to be all right. You believe in God? That's all it takes. Oh, don't worry about it. Everything is going to be all right, child. Oh, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead. <laughs> and we just bandage them up. But we never fix their problems. Oh, we say a word every now and then. And when we do... We actually leave them worse off than what they were by giving them something that's not real. Oh, if that doesn't work. We'll put a band-aid. Sorry about this, child. <laughs> and we'll cover up. Oh, and if that don't work, We'll put other things on them. Oh, hang on, I'm moving them. I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we pull out our first aid card. What do we do when their airway gets blocked and they can't breathe? They can't receive the spirit of the word of God. What if they're choking on what you give them and they can't handle it? What do we do when they need CPR? And spiritually, you try to resuscitate them. But there are some that are just bleeding. And we don't stop the wound. We just put a band-aid on it and go on saying it's going to be all right. But are we healing the sick? Are we raising the dead? Are we giving the gospel out that they might be made whole? Is there a doctor in the house? All right, all right. Some got burns because they've been burned by situations in life. Some got burns because they've been frustrated. 
<laughs> They've been tore up, messed up. Oh, some been burned. Some are in shock. Some got fractures from life. Oh, they've been beat up so long in life that they got little cracks in them. Oh, we can't even see the fractures. But sometimes we say so many things that hurt people to their heart and it cracks them. We say some things so hard and so cruel and so mean as Christians that we cause cracks in people's lives. Is there a doctor in the house that will heal their wounds? Then sometimes they get food poisoning because we try to tell them, be careful of what you eat. Don't take everything that folks give you. Search, search the scriptures. Every book you pick up, watch out. Every person you listen to, watch out. What do I say, Brother Harold? You check what I say by the word. Amen. Amen. Oh, because it may sound good, it may taste good, but it still can get you sick. All right. All right. Some people get food poisoning. And then what about those that goes into seizure because they just can't handle the stress of it all? Some folks, when you try to tell them, they just faint on you. It's too much for me to bear. I can't do all of that. Oh, get somebody else to do that. Call on somebody else to do that. Oh, get somebody else to sing. Oh, I'll just sit here. I can't handle that. Some people get frostbite because they've gotten so cold. Where they once was on fire for God. Which they once were on fire for God. They were so on fire for God. Oh, they were at church. I know folks, when I was growing up, every day that the church door opened, they were there. Every time we had prayer meeting, they were there. Oh, this boy had a little altar. He would carry it in the back of his truck. Everywhere we went, when we got out, he would pull out this altar and say, Come on, y'all, let's have church. It was this more was really funny because everywhere he carried the altar with him. But as time went by, he quit carrying the altar. And as time went by, he didn't come to church like he used to come to church. And as time went by, he didn't come to prayer meeting like he used to come to prayer meeting. And one day, we didn't see him no more. And everybody went looking for him. But spiritually, he had died. Is there a doctor in the house? Is there a physician? Is there any bomb in Gilead? And if there is, then why are the people of God still hurting? Why are we still lost? Our church could be overflowing, John, if we were knocking on doors. Our church could be overflowing if we were truly saying, come to the house of God. Yo, but you know, we said, oh, this is what you need, but go where God leads you. Well, that's why God sent you to lead them. God sent you to draw them. Because if you say go to the church of your choice, they'll choose not to go to any church. When you say go to the church of the choice, you don't know where they might go. But if you're there, then the church you came out must be all right. Is there any bomb in Gilead? I, oh, then I found out how easy as church, folks, we forget what made us strong. I was up since Thursday morning at 5. And then I stayed up to prepare for the barbecue. So I stayed up all the way to 3 o'clock Friday. And then finally after we closed up, Brother Jeff had finished, I went home, took my shower, jumped in the bed, and my phone went off. And they said somebody died for hospice. You got to go all the way to Quero. And I was so tired that I got in my car and I was going to the Shell station. And I saw the road, and I turned across the lane, and there was no road. It was like going down the hill. And I swerved back, and I was in the wrong lane, because I was going up the traffic, it was coming down, and I kept on going. I caught in there, and I caught in the, draft, in the gas station. I walked in the store, grabbed me a wood red ball, and it fell out of my hand. So I picked up the red ball again, and it fell on my hand. I told the lady, I'm sorry, I'm not drunk. <laughs> and I grabbed the red ball, poured it in some ice, and just drunk it down. Then I got in my car and drove the quarrel. But in the midst of when I got where I got, because somebody had died and somebody was hurting, I forgot about my tiredness. Because when I saw the needs of lost humanity, when I saw the need of someone was hurting, I forgot about myself. 
Oh, yes, I want to get rest, Brother John. Yes, I want to go places with my family. But there's something greater than my family, and that is the work of God. And God will give me time for my family to be getting out of here in a couple weeks. But people are lost and dying and looking for someone to reach them. Are you doing what God has called you to do for his kingdom? The harvest is past, and the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Can you imagine you're in the line for heaven, and you're all excited, and the other line is going to hell? If you don't mind, because you're in front of me, John. And somebody say, John, is that you? You knew about Jesus? And you never told me? You knew I was living this kind of life and I was going to go to hell and you never reached for me? But we're in the line for heaven. Everything's all right with us. What about our friends? What about our families? What about our church? Are we reaching? Are we seeking? Are we doing everything that we can to make sure that we're carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ? I look at the Mormons riding their bike on a two-year commitment. Yeah. They are Jehovah Witness Saturday morning knocking on our doors. We're all the children of God. We're all the people of God. Is there no bond? In Gilead, is there no physician? Why then is not the health of my people restored? Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, "If my people, which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven." I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. But it's funny, it didn't say if the world, it says if my people. Is, is as God is saying, the condition of the world is in the church's hands. If we would do right, if the children of God would live right, as a child of God, do we still carry our quick anger? As children of God, do we still have our quick frustrations? As a student of God, can, do we have ears that are open to listen, or do we say it's my way or the highway? I had a pastor that used to do that. A pastor used to say, you can't be saved at my church. You can't be saved. Don't let the door hit you when the good Lord split you. And I said, no! Do we have a heart to learn and listen? would tell us things so that we can be better Christians. Is there any bomb in Gilead? Is there not a physician? Church, we have a responsibility to lost humanity. The greatest person in heaven will not be the preacher. The greatest person in heaven will not be the choir leader. It will be the one who lost, saved, lost humanity. The soul winner will be the greatest person in heaven. But I healed a thousand people. And one got saved. Oh, but I preached great sermons, made people shout and jump. But only one got saved. Oh, I gave my money to the poor, I fed everybody, but only one got saved. Everything that Jesus came was to seek and to save the lost. Let's get and be about the Father's business. Winning souls, healing the sick, casting out diseases and demons. Let's be about the Father's business. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. This thing is bigger than me. This thing is bigger than you.
But if you make it just about you, it'll never be what God wants it to be. This has to be a collective bodily thing. We got to function as one body and one unit. If this is where you feel God wants you to be, then you got to be a body united. We can't just have a few people operating through things. Oh, I was so glad Cynthia John came as she talking about brine and chicken. I had no idea what she was talking about. And the flavor got into the bones. And somebody else did this, somebody else did that. And I realized we got to click together. We got to work together. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, when, when Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing light of wind, and it filled all the house. But they were in one accord and one place. They were in unity, no arguing, no dividing. They followed leadership. They followed what God gave the pastor, and they went after it with all their heart. We can capture this city. But the only way we're going to capture it is that we got to first let God capture us. We can't be half committed. We can't be half on fire for God and expect God to use us. We can't be wishy washy. We can't be sometime. We can't be here sometime in the garden today. We got to say, This world is not my home, and I'm going to give my all to God. Because God gave his all to me. And that way, Brother John, you hear somebody say, Hey, John, thank you. And you say, who are you? He said, I was that boy in your class that you told me about Jesus and you touched my heart. The songwriter said, thank you for giving to the Lord for I am a life that was changed. You don't know what word you might spark. What word you might... John, don't you? I'm still using you. I like when John get excited when the kids are doing things. John, John jumped, jumped when they were singing that choir at that time. You had those kids. John jumped up was hugging everybody. John, no, be watch myself. He just grabbing on. Camera get up to him. Because his heart is in the children. And that's where his heart is. And so he's trying to reach them. Are you reaching where your passion is? Are you taking your passion and reaching it with all your heart? I cannot do what you're called to do. I can't do it. Everybody's got something special that God is calling them to for, and only you can do what God is calling you to do. But what you do must be for the sake of the body and not for the sake of self, so that the body can grow. Is there any bomb in Gilead? Is there a physician? Is there a doctor? I've been, been with hospice for 10 years. I have had approximately 3,000 patients, John. 3,000, John, have died. All 3,000. And I was working with a man and I said, is there anything spiritually I can help you with? He said to me, no, when I die, I'm going to hell. And I looked at him, John, and I must have had a look at my face like, he said, you probably wonder why I say that. He said, God asks too much. And I said, sir, please, before the cancer gets you to where you can't speak, talk to me. It was reported he died screaming in his bed. You don't know the last chance you get to tell somebody to live like that. You don't know the last time you get to share the love of Jesus Christ. You don't know when you speak to somebody if that's the last time you'll ever speak a word. And what will be the last thing they remember when you spoke to them? You treated them well, you were excited, you was on fire, you talked to them about God, or did they see the you that they used to know? Is there any bomb? Bomb is healing. In Gilead, is there not a physician? This word is the bomb that we give. 
We are God's physician. This is a hospital for the sinner, not a rest home for the saint. This is where hurting humanity needs to come. Can we, will you, be about the Father's business? Or is life too busy for you? Father God, eternal God of glory, we humble ourselves before your presence and your power. We say thank you, God, for all those who are doing their best to do the work of God. Thank you for those who took up the challenge to give, to reach out, to knock doors. Thank you for those that are witnessing at their schools, witnessing on their jobs. Thank you for those that are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ as much as they can and as much as they're allowed to in certain places and situations. We thank you for those that are reaching lost humanity, God. We thank you for those that are seeking and saving the lost. We ask, God, that everything we do will be about body building, about lifting up the name of Jesus to build the body of Jesus Christ. We ask that you have known our ears and known our hearts and known our minds. We ask God, we thank you for this opportunity. For such a time as this have we been called that God has saved us to put us in 2000, 2016 where the world is on its handbasket going to hell. Where all kind of things are busting loose upon the church and the church is being trying to be brought under surrender to uh, submit to the world's rule be out of subjection, to be accepted. Everything that the world is trying to throw at us, equality and sexes, no matter what the sexes are, God, they're trying to say that you don't exist. They call you a she. They call you an it. They call you a thing or that unknown, that almighty, whatever it is. But we know that you are the Lord God almighty. And we lift up your name. For those, God, that have a hard time understanding what I say or trying to do, I ask you to touch their hearts. For those that disagree, I give you, ask you to give them understanding. But I pray, God, that you bring the church in unity, that we can be overcomers, and that we can conquer our city. In Jesus' name, let the church say. Amen. Amen.